Good day, everyone. Thanks for joining me, Meteo Mark, for Meteo Mark's weather here. Look at what's going on here across the east. A lot of flooding rains across the south. This could be translating into a late weekend heavy snow event. Could we be seeing several inches of heavy wet snow here across the northeast? We'll take a look and see how plausible this is. What areas could be targeted for the heavy snow? And we'll be looking at our mid-range forecast here, as well as the rest of your forecast to see exactly will we see another major cold snap with heavy snow potential. Let's get into it. And just how much snowfall could we be looking at out of this storm? Look at this. Some of the models are showing as much as six plus inches of snow here across parts of the interior northeast. So as we take a look at Friday here, you can see starting off Friday, 7 a.m., you can see our big precipitation shield up here. Only areas of southern Ontario, Quebec, and northern New England getting on wintry precipitation. All that rest is rain. Still heavy rain persisting here across parts of Louisiana. Now, I want to draw your attention to our next system here. This is going to be the system that affects us later on in the weekend in the east that could potentially bring us that snowstorm. Now, as we head throughout the rest of Friday, we do get some shower and thunderstorm activity across Texas all the way west eastward here towards Tennessee, Louisiana. So more heavy rains coming. I'm sorry to say that, but that is the pattern. This low pressure going right up through the Tennessee Valley here with the west side of the Appalachians initially. Now watch what the GFS does. This is 7 p.m. on Saturday. So look what starts to happen. We have a big 1020 millibar high just to the north here anchored right over northern New England. This northern fringe, especially northwestern Ohio, Cleveland, you're going to be right, right on the edge here. So if you're in Cleveland, I caution you, you're going to teeter back and forth between 32, 33, and 31. So that's going to make all the difference in the world. East of you, towards New York and northern Pennsylvania, more frozen precipitation again here. So look at this. The GFS is showing an intensifying band of precipitation through 4 a.m. on sa Sunday here. So look at this. Cleveland, it does start to change over to heavy wet snow. Look at this. So we could be seeing several inches here, maybe two to five in the valleys, five to eight above 1,200 feet. And look at this. We get some bursts of heavier snow towards 4 p.m. As this low pressure starts to wind up, it's not going to be terribly strong, 1,000 millibars, but it's got a lot of moisture here with it. And you do start to see the rain changing to snow here across parts of the Northeast. Now, Places like Boston, Hartford, Concord here, you could see uh, some of these snowfall rates pick up later on Sunday evening. So as we just back this up just a little bit, there's 1 p.m. Sunday. So even Binghamton area, Scranton area, heavy snow continuing here as we get throughout the day. Now it does start to police. There's 7 p.m. Sunday. And as we go throughout 1 a.m. Monday morning, you can see still see Boston snowing pretty hard here. And then changing to snow in New York City, and parts of New Jersey here. So this system winding up, Nova Scotia getting hit. Looks like New Brunswick's getting off the hook with this one. And this one pulls out to see uh, pretty quickly. Now, as we just go a little bit beyond, you know, the near term here, there is our next clipper system for the 30th. So another system diving southward here as we get into next week. And this could be a classic clipper going to, you know, a small coastal low here as we get towards February 1st. And could this give some areas of the mid-Atlantic here a burst of heavier snow as we head towards February 1st as this system pulls off? Because it's kind of being blocked here to the north. You can see there is a big active pattern starting here. And then we start a Colorado low scenario as we get towards February 4th. Now, let me just back that up just a hair here. That is where we're going to get into the second, third. This is where the GFS and the European, I'm going to show you the European momentarily here, differ greatly the GFS starts to warm things much quicker here towards the 4th, and no really big large-scale snowstorms over here as we get throughout the 4th and the 5th, and a lot of blocking up here to the north, so these systems kind of have a tendency to move just off the southeast coast. Now, let's get into the Euro. All right, so as you take a look at this, we're going to get into Friday here. Heavier rain pulling out of the southeast temporarily, uh, except for southeastern Louisiana, southern parts of Alabama and Mississippi. Now, there's that low pressure, 7 a.m. across parts of the northeast and Ohio Valley. That continues to move east. Rainfall continuing across the northeast here. There is our next piece of energy here across the Four Corners and Texas region. So, 4 p.m. here. This is what we got going on. Dallas all the way down eventually to Houston. We're going to see that pivot there. And then 
tapping into some golf moisture here. This is 4 a.m. Saturday. Now look what starts to blossom here. Low pressure heading a little bit further to the south here on the European model, right across eastern Tennessee. The GFS was right across central Tennessee. So that couple hundred miles could make all the difference here. You see this is going to head right up the spine of the Appalachians initially. There's the two low pressure, the dual low pressure, the Ohio Valley low west of the Appalachians, and then our secondary low right over North Carolina and Virginia Beach here. So this is going to be key. Could we have snowfall Sunday morning here on the European model falling? It's very plausible, although the European has been a little bit warmer as of late. And you can see as we pull throughout the day here on Sunday, you can see the European pulls a lot of the heavier precipitation southward with only the northern fringe being cold enough for snow so that's the difference between the european model and the gfs at this time you can see that conveyor belt of moisture pulling off to the east there's 10 a.m on monday morning the 29th so you know the winds are going to be strong when you see the isobars like this and cape cod you'll probably be getting burst of heavy snow moving out of the picture as we continue to go in time here now nova scotia coastal nova scotia definitely will get clipped by this as well as new finland here now this next system there's that clipper showing up here on the europe yeah there it is the european model there's that trough it's more of an open trough there's our low pressure system so you will see some blusterier conditions a much colder week here uh definitely shaping up for the east now as we head towards next weekend you know the following weekend not this weekend but the following this are there's the first Here's a low pressure bombing over Quebec. Now, it is questionable whether this is going to unfold, but we start to see another area of low pressure form coastally here, uh, as well as this inland low pressure system connected to it with uh, one of those uh, Norland trough scenarios. So these are very difficult to forecast, and I'm not going to get too much into this at this time. Uh, especially this far out, but this is definitely something to watch because we could be looking at a very unsettled time here, uh, parts of the Northeast U.S. into Southeast Canada. So definitely something to keep an eye on here. Snowfall accumulations here. This is where things get interesting. A couple inches there in northern New England, Four Corners region. But look at here as we get into Sunday into Monday. Interesting, the European has pulled back a little bit with our latest run. Let's zoom in here onto the northeast. And yeah, with the European model, it is just, I don't know, it's all over the place with this storm. It's all dependent on thermal profiles. But if you are in these these areas, please stay tuned because, you know, the last European run had a lot more snowfall accumulations here. Interesting, curious here, those uh, six plus stripe inches here in northwest New Jersey, southern uh, Hudson Valley, Eastern Catskills, and then a bullseye here in the twin tiers of New York and Pennsylvania. I think it's safe to say two to five inches will be falling widespread in this area and then possibly five to eight inches, especially above 1200 feet. All right. So taking a look at the GFS here. What? Yeah. This is the difference here. The, the GFS, the latest GFS going all out crazy with snowfall accumulations here. Uh, the twin tiers of New York and Pennsylvania, Catskills, Pocono. So this is what I caution you. This is almost like the GFS is signaling that we're going to have a stronger storm and colder air profiles. And that that might, you know, it may be on to something here. This is something we're going to have to keep an eye on here. Also a two to four inch range here across northern Ohio. So anywhere from four to eight inches here uh, from the twin tiers of New York, Pennsylvania, the Hudson Valley, and then over into parts of New England, even getting up here into parts of northern New England. So this is something, this is a trend we're going to have to keep an eye on here. So here we go, total liquid equivalent precipitation here. Look at this. This is the GFS showing a lot of rainfall across the southeast, flooding continuing uh, anywhere from about two to as much as four plus inches. Southeastern Louisiana over towards the Panhandle of Florida, southern Alabama could see more. Look at this, all the way up into parts of the northeast as well. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday system, those long drawn out uh, low pressure systems will continue to pile up about an inch to an inch and a half here on average. And as we flip over to the European model here, here is liquid equivalent equivalent precipitation much more robust here on the european model you can see a lot more heavier precipitation definitely more in agreement with this uh flooding concerns from eastern tennessee all the way down to southeastern louisiana parts of alabama mississippi georgia and then up here into the northeast some of this might actually fall as snow as we get later on in the weekend all right so if we take a look at the h triple r here what is going on here as we head throughout the gulf coast region this is where a lot of tropical moisture is thankfully it'll be waning a little bit but look at this as we head towards uh this is right around 3 a.m on the 
Friday here. Look at southeastern Louisiana, southern part of Alabama, Mississippi, and the Panhandle of Florida. You could be looking at a resurgence of tropical moisture here. This looks really menacing here as we continue to go out here in time. This is something we're going to have to keep a very close eye on here. And look at that. I don't expect too much severe. There may be some strong damaging wind, large hail, but I think flooding is going to be the main concern. This almost looks like it's trying to go tropical here, but it's going to be feeding into our next disturbance uh, that I showed you here on the uh, synoptic models here. So definitely something to keep a close eye on here as we go throughout Friday into early Saturday morning before these storms start rampaging here across the south. This is 1 p.m. on Saturday. These storms will be full, uh, feeding into the moisture here uh, to the north as well. Now I wanted to show you the northern side of the system. Yeah, there's going to be rainfall moving up overnight into the northeast into parts of Friday here. And look at this. We're going to see some rainfall here anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch on average. Maybe be locally higher amounts to three quarters of an inch but that's going to be moving and exiting out of much of the northeast here it is going to be a pretty rainy day as we get throughout you know friday here across much of the northeast but look at the ohio valley a lot of drizzles left over on 9 a.m friday as well as 2 p.m. Friday, we do start to see some redevelopment of some rainfall here into the Ohio Valley. So the rainfall should pick back up. Northern New England stays all snow here, probably two to five inches, locally higher amounts to six inches. That begins to pull off uh, towards the northeast. We get some brief lake enhancement until we get our next system that starts to roll in uh, for later Sunday here to the south. All right, so the pattern is a raging inferno ridge. In fact, it gets going across much of North America. This is not the pattern you want to see for snowstorms. Look at this. You actually have a big area of troughiness up by Greenland. And the, all the ridges here are across much of North America. Now, towards the end of the month, towards the 31st, look what starts to happen. This may be our chance for a potential East Coast snowstorm. So that, look at that. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty intense here as we head through Friday the 2nd into the 3rd as well. This is a trend we'll have to keep a very close eye on for the following weekend, not this weekend, but the next weekend, and then a big area of blockiness. But look at this. The El Nino jet stream really starts to kick in here across the southern part of the United States. All right, and I'm going to touch on this going into the rest of February uh, with my outlook for the rest of winter coming out before the end of the month here so watch for that but look at as we head towards Fe into february here you can see the pattern we try to keep ridging here across northeastern north america but i do caution you there's going to be some systems moving across the southeast here through the middle part of february that do try to get going so yeah the trend has been for some ridging but also very fast moving flow pattern of troughs and equal chances of snowstorms. And here we go. Brandon from New Jersey. Finally, a blanket of snow. Island Heights, New Jersey, three to four inches. Atlantic City overperformed with six inches. This was this past Friday's event of snowfall across the area. Looking good there. Finally, some more snow or New Jersey. Nice captures there, Brandon. So taking a look at our Canadian winter storm outlook, what is going on here north of the border? How is everybody doing up here? Well, it is going to be a quiet one, except if you're on the west coast of Canada here. That's where we're going to continue to see very active pattern. Southeast Canada, we'll get some bouts of snow here, but I have to be honest, most of these low pressure systems along the east coast of North America will stay well to your south. These clipper systems really staying to your south. This is the 31st of January. Look at this. We only see a few clipper systems. This is not really what we want to see this time of year. We want to see more snowstorms because, you know, we just dealt with a Canadian wildfire season that was one of the worst I can remember in quite modern time here. So this is something that is going to be a problem as we continue through time. Look at this. As we head through February 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, I'm sorry to say, this is not good news. We need to be getting a good snowpack up here. And, you know, it just doesn't look like we're getting the storms that we need here into much of Canada. So the tropics here, I don't want to leave you out down here. I know it's not tropical season, but look at this. Yeah, through as we head throughout the weekend here, we have a few showers moving through Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, parts of Central America here, getting a little bit heavy towards Honduras and Belize as we head towards Sunday into Monday. But look at this. Things start to really clear out here with the exception 
uh, for Honduras where the rainfall continues. It looks like Puerto Rico and Haiti here in the northern part of the Lesser Antilles getting hit with some sort of stalled out frontal boundary here. And that continues to clear out as we head uh, through the first part of the first week of February here. Look how clear it is. Even the Bahamas stay pretty clear. Uh, only areas west of Florida here getting hit with some heavy tropical rains. So if we take a look at precipitation amounts here across the Western Caribbean, you can see, yeah, it looks pretty dry for the most part. Parts of Jamaica, Cayman Islands through this weekend getting upwards of about 10 to 20 millimeters, maybe locally higher. But for the most part, we're not looking at too much rainfall here. Uh, parts of northern Honduras might get upwards of 100 to 150 millimeters. That's a big deal. That's three to four inches. And as we get over here into the Eastern Caribbean, we do have a little bit of this tropical wave moving through parts of the Southern Lesser Antilles here uh, towards Trinidad and Tobago on northward to St. Vincent, maybe upwards of 13 to 26 millimeters, less than a half an inch. Not too bad. And then we got a frontal boundary that's going to be pushing across northern parts of Hispaniola, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico here that may skim here towards the 1st of February, bringing upwards of 25 to as much as 40 millimeters of rainfall. Bahamas, especially Especially the southern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos look very dry. I got plenty more weather for you in just a moment, but take a look at my affiliate. Do you want some awesome maps? Check this out. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning, digital, professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. All right, so we're going to take a look at high temperatures here. Look at this massive warm surge here, 50s and 60s up in here in parts of the Ohio Valley into parts of the Mid-Atlantic, 70s all the way up just south of the nation's capital. That's crazy. We're really void of any large-scale areas of cold. Look at this. I mean, yeah, this is a little cold, but really, can you call that much cold? This is Saturday, by the way. We're cooling back down to the 40s, if you can call that cold. But watch this. As we get into Sunday here, look at this. There is that cold pocket of air. 20s northern New England, 30s. This might be enough to get us a couple inches to several inches of snow in an interior northeast. Now, that starts to lift out for Monday. Still cold here in northern New England, but look at Texas here, 60s. As this warm air really starts to build for Tuesday, only cold air here is across parts of the northeast and New England staying in the 30s here. And as we get towards Wednesday of next week, this is just a lot of warmth. 40s all the way up to the Ohio Valley, 60s and 70s along the Gulf Coast. Extended outlook from hometown viewers being into this grand supper, Susquehanna River Valley of New York and Pennsylvania. Look at this. More rain Friday in a Friday night. We will see probably upwards of a quarter to a half an inch of rain on average here. And highs will be getting well up into the lower 50s. Saturday, a little bit cooler, cloudier. This is where the interesting thing starts. A potential start of snow, rain and snow mix in the valley Sunday. Uh, changing over to all snow Sunday evening and Sunday night. So we could have accumulations of about two to five inches in the valleys, maybe five to eight inches above, say, 1,200 feet. So this is going to be very elevation dependent. Definitely stay tuned. I'll have more updates as we go throughout that. And look at that. It turns colder next week. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather. Join me on Facebook at Media Mark, also at Weather Northeastern, also at Hurricane Northeastern, and also at Susquehanna Weather. Also, Twitter at Weather Eastern, and you can visit me at MediaMark.com. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to check out my winter weather outlook for 2023-24. A link in the description down below, as well as my affiliate, Trilogy Maps.